got a hole in my case. So I got to figure out what the fuck I'm going to do to make it back. We got about three miles of trail. All right, so what I've done is stuck a piece of paper in there. I hope it holds. So at this point, we only had one camera left, and uh, unfortunately, the audio is not that great. So I figured I'd uh, kind of narrate a little bit of this for you. Um, to give you a little backstory, we'd actually been out there for five hours already. We started this, actually it was six hours. We started this trail at 10 o'clock in the morning, and um, it was now about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, the problem is the trailheads close at 5, and it gets dark around 6.30, 7 o'clock up there. The other problem we were having is, due to my... I guess being a complete idiot, um, I didn't bring any food or water or anything. We brought uh, two Pepsis, and we'd already gone through those, and we bought, I guess, some little snack cakes or whatever just to, you know. I really was not expecting to be out there on, on this trail all day. I was thinking an hour or two at the latest, and we'd go, you know, back and eat some lunch and then head it again. So I actually said that we had three miles to go. Well, I was wrong. We had actually only gone three miles, and we had a whole 6.8 miles to go. So all day we were out there for six hours, and we've gone three miles. You know, all kinds of thoughts were starting to cross my mind. Um, do I leave her in the woods and go get help? You know, have somebody ride me back into the woods and get her and the bike out? Uh, do I call for help? Um, you know, a lot of situations were going through my mind at this point because I, I knew that we weren't both going to make it out of there in time before it got dark. It, it really got real up there real quick, so... And then things took a turn for the very worst. Oh shit. Got a broken case and now a broken wife. This ain't good. Okay. <clears throat> what happened? You okay? You okay? Where are you hurt? Right here. Right there. My elbow. So then after a break, we got trucking again. And uh, came up to the sign. Oh, no way. Right, mile marker 3.5. Damn, we have to go. This is not good. We got a big uh, emergency here. Actually, this isn't, this isn't gonna work. We're gonna have to do something. We're gonna have to do something. All right, hold on right here. I'm gonna call the front gate. Go ahead and turn the bike off. So we called the office and they had suggested we go up to uh, what's called the uh, Sissy Trail. And what that is is basically an escape route. Um, noob mistake number, I don't even know how many mistakes I've made so far, but I didn't actually bring a damn map. Um, if you're gonna go out on the trail system, bring your map. What was I thinking? Uh, I guess I was a little excited to get out in the morning, and I just, I guess I wasn't thinking. So because I didn't have the map with me, we actually backtracked another uh, half a mile, and we bring you back to where this clip just started, actually. When we arrived at that little corner there, I called them back, and I said, hey, which way do we go? And they go, oh, you go, you hit this trail, and you keep on going straight, you see the sissy. I'm like, no, I don't. We come to the realization that I had backtracked and I was supposed to go to mile marker number four-ish and then go straight towards the Sissy Trail. So at that point, I was actually in a little bit of a panic over the phone. I explained to him that, you know, we've been out here for six hours, we don't have any food or water, and she's not going to make it. She'd actually fallen and she's hurt pretty bad. Um, she's not showing it, of course. She's, I'll tell you, she's a strong woman. I'm super proud of her. So at that point, they actually offered to uh, come out and rescue us. Um, they said, hey man, can you give me a couple bucks for our time and our gas on the side by side? And I was like, absolutely, dude, completely. 
Um, dude's brother, forgive me if I'm saying this wrong, uh, Williams, actually, that's where we're at now. He actually came out and picked up the wife, and I'm following him out the uh, trail. And then uh, he brought us back through the trail so we could get her a bike, and uh, we rode that out. So that's what you're actually seeing now. So when you get through this little bit of water crossing here, you actually go straight. This is the sissy trail right here. You just keep on going straight instead of following the signs for the trail. And uh, we were super close to this. Had I known, instead of backtracking, had I brought my map, I could have just said, okay, well, we can make it to the sissy. Uh, from the where the sissy trail begins to getting out to the rifle range, it's uh, probably about a quarter to a half a mile. And it's really not that bad. Uh, if I had brought the map, we could have gotten out. So that's, that's completely on me. So I'm actually going to release a raw footage of that uh, trail. Um, there, I'll put a card up here in the right hand corner if you want to click on that. The link will be in the description as well as the end card. Uh, it's basically going to be from beginning to getting out to the rifle range. Uh, no edits, just straight uh, from beginning to end. What's that? This is a dirt road, you go that way? Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, cool. You guys can follow me out or when, when we come back. Alright, cool. You want to hang here, hon? Oh, it's first time in one of these. Yeah, yeah, that's what she was saying. This thing seems like a boss. Oh, it's super cool. <laughs> we, were, we were pretty happy with it. We picked it up. You good? Time. All right, cool. All right. Yeah, you'll probably see some traffic come up and down from the rifle range, but everybody's pretty cool. Now I'm going to have to buy one of these. <laughs> yeah, be careful. They're like cars. They're addictive. Yeah. They're, uh... Tires, skid plates, Tire, exhaust, yeah, all that shit. All yeah. That stuff. Yeah. This thing, I mean, it's it's been a great machine. We would definitely get skid plates for, <laughs> for this weight gold. Right. So I was, I was really starting to, honestly, I was really starting to freak out because. Yeah, if you get out of here in the woods, it's, it's, well, that's why we like to let people know that they can call us. We are happy to come and do this. We don't want somebody to be out here and get hurt badly. Right. You know, trying to get out, but we can just come get you. Well, you saved our asses, that's for sure. After having a really good conversation with uh, Williams, and again, forgive me if I uh, screwed your name up, I'm sorry. Um, he, like I said, I don't know if you guys heard, but he said, you know, we're uh, glad to come out and do this. You know, we would rather people call us and then get hurt. So if you guys go to the Moto Cove and you get into a tough situation and you need it, uh, definitely give them a call. Um, so here we are on the DR200 headed out of the trail. Uh, I gotta give this little DR200 props. It's on stock tires. It's completely bone stock. Let me know in the comment section if you'd also like me to release the, uh, this footage of the DR200 making it out of there. Unfortunately, the GoPro died, so I can't give you end-to-end. -end. But, you know, we all know what the DRZ can do. I never post what the DR200 can do. I uh, never put it through this kind of punishment before, and I was really shocked at its ability. So uh, just let me know if it's something you're interested in in the comment section. So, today was my vote. And, uh, yeah. I put us in a situation, and it was stupid. I should have had a map. should have been a lot better prepared. And it's my fault. I freaked out on the trail. I freaked out thinking we were going to die. Uh, I should have been a lot more prepared. Um, and calm with you. You did amazing. I did the best I could. Well, you did fan freaking fantastic. Uh, I put us in a bad situation. So, yeah, um, today was really scary. And I thought after doing the green, I thought I could do the orange but apparently there was a lot that I couldn't do he had to clear a lot for me and once we were like entering the orange um it it honestly felt like it was gonna be okay I could do it I felt like you know I have this the dudes that rescued us basically saved our lives we would have been spending the night in the woods if that dude wouldn't have rescued us I was able to make a call. I actually had service in that cove there, which I can't believe. So I guess uh, I gotta fix the DRZ and I'll catch you soon. Peace.